welcome back. And if this is your first time, welcome to my channel. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, I think it's going to be over here. I post content like this about once a week. Uh, for this video, we're going to do another points of view one-on-one -on -one photographer talks. And the photographer we're going to be speaking with today is my good friend, Mara Belton. She is a photographer based out of Baltimore, Maryland. So let's jump on into it. For today's episode of Points of View uh, Photographers 101 Talks, uh, we have my good friend Mara Belton. She's a photographer based out of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so let's get into it. This is this is Mara. Hello. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Is there anything you want to say to anyone watching? Um, if anyone's watching, watching Roy's videos, because they're only going to get better. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, we can only hope. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's just jump into it. Um, how long have you been doing photography? Um, was that did I answer? Was I prepared for that question? How long? Have I, <laughs> ooh, let, um, when did we start hanging out? 20, 2010? 20, no, 2012? I think it was like 2012. Yeah, yeah. Around there. Yeah, so maybe like seven or eight years. Cool, cool. Um, what got you into it? Six. Was there six like or a, seven. It seems like it's been more than six. Let's go in the middle. Seven. <laughs> All right. Sounds like a plane. Seven it is. <laughs> seven minutes. So was there a certain thing or a time that you remember that like you're like, oh, I want to start shooting photography? Like, oh, I, like, is there someone that was shooting that got you into it or what kind of oh, pushed you? Was there that? like somebody you met? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think it was a bunch of things. Um, so I, I like had recently moved um, to Luray um i was hanging out with you and you asked me to model for you sometimes and i was like mm, it doesn't seem that hard i could probably do it too and like instagram was kind of becoming a thing so that was like opening up my eyes to kind of like the world of like photography and like looking at pictures in a way i hadn't before and it made me kind of think like "Ooh, like let me see if i can do this so yeah. that's what got me into it um so is there a certain genre of photography that you're really into or is like one do you like more than the other or do you just like all of it or um i appreciate all of it i definitely like portraits the most um that's like to me like a, a landscape picture is pretty sure but if you put like a person in there too it, to me it just gives it like context and it just has more of a draw so portraits yeah. or even oh. like you know a dog or something it's a dog cool. yeah so so a dog and human even maybe a, better a baby <laughs> just put a baby in a landscape okay i mean that could work i don't know i haven't tried that but um if you do i, I look forward to seeing the photos <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about like doing some real genre bending landscape infant photography so i look forward to that sounds awesome yeah. <laughs> yeah i feel like there's not a niche for that yet so uh you might you might make some dough off of that like all these crop vloggers like what are they going to do when they start having babies like they got to incorporate the baby somehow this is true i didn't think about that yeah especially with the coronavirus right now everyone's stuck inside so you know there's gonna be some babies coming out of this yeah and then people will want to travel even more so exactly cut Brilliant. That part out. i don't want people getting in on this <laughs> okay i'll cut it out yeah yep yeah. yeah, for sure <laughs> um so let's see um is there kind of like a genre of photography that you haven't gotten like you want to shoot that you haven't had a chance to or anything like that or anything that you've maybe been like kind of hesitant about trying um i definitely i think like for me like i found what i really like and like right up from the beginning and so i've just been doing that ever since like like sure like i wouldn't say no to like learning more about how to take like panoramic landscapes or like even like studio work like i've been yeah. Um, getting more into that now, like helping some friends with that. So it's fun to learn about it, but like I don't have like a huge desire to do that myself. Okay, cool. So you said that you're doing studio work with friends. Like, how did you get into that? Just friends just asking you to kind of just help with lighting and stuff, or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like what you said. So. Oh, cool, cool. You know, I'm yeah. I'm pretty friendly. I'm usually down to do like whatever. So I'd be like, oh, Mara, you like photography? Would you like to help with some lighting stuff? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't yeah. know anything about lighting, but yes, I am an expert and I will but, help you. <laughs> yeah, but that's how you learn, right? Like exactly. when I started at the studio, yeah. I didn't know anything. And uh, yeah. after working there for a while, I learned a bunch of stuff. But now I'm losing it because I don't have that, that stuff anymore. But um, 
Yeah, it's definitely fun. I feel like I feel like a lot of people are kind of like oh all natural light and stuff. But I feel like having like strobes and everything, you can definitely do a lot more stuff with that than you can with just natural light. I mean, it's cool. I, I shoot with natural light all the time, but I'm just saying like there's definitely uh, there's there's pros and cons to both. I feel like. Yeah. No, and I think um, like I know for me, the more I learn about like studio lighting and using strobes and things like that, it helps me know about lighting more in general mm -hmm. so like I have more of a knowledge to work with so like it never hurts to go into a situation with like more tools in your toolbox to help you get the photo that you want so definitely so using all this new technology well not new but all this lighting technology and stuff is there a certain thing that you're like oh I want to get that so I can start shooting with something like that and when I go out and shoot on my own you know or no, no because really? I'm broke I hear you. You got to look at what you got, you know, like, <laughs> like it, you know, in the, in the future when I have like a random 10 K that I can allot to like pleasure spending, like de definitely that would be like a consideration. I mean, there's some other things I'd like to do too, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. I would love 10 K. But like funny or an issue, like absolutely. I would like get it all and play with it all the time and it would be fun. For sure. For sure um so do you have like your your setup right now um do you have uh like a certain lens that you go to or like is there a favorite lens you have yeah so when i like first started getting into photography i like would like get you know, go on ebay all the time and get like a ton of different lenses so i had all these different lenses and then i got my um sigma art 35 millimeter and I just use that one all the time because it was so good. <laughs> so I pulled all my other lenses and I just use that one exclusively. Like I'd like to have like another two or three, but that one is just, it's good for what I need. And it's, it's really, really beautiful. Um, I do, I have some lenses for my iPhone. So I have some moment lenses. They're like a company that makes detachable lenses for phones and I guess other devices, but mostly phones. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so they have they have like a wide lens, like an 18 millimeter. So oh, cool. I like to have that option. And like when I was like shooting people a lot, I would bring that with my phone as well to like capture a wider shot just to like give me options. Oh, cool, cool. Do you think uh, kind of like with smartphones and everything that that technology is kind of going to overpass like regular like cameras and stuff at some point? Um, so I would say it I would say it already has overpassed regular cameras in terms of volume of people like oh, using it, but yeah. like quality like not quite but very very close yeah for sure do you think you're ever just going to switch just to having a smartphone and getting rid of your dslr like honestly maybe like I, I mean if i could go out and buy like the newest iphone pro max and like a bunch of lenses for it like when it when i have extra money to do that it is going to be a decision like new camera or new kind of like mobile setup for sure yeah but isn't it like what is it like every three years or something to get a new phone out and then like didn't apple like admit to like downgrading the software for like the older models so people yeah. are like oh i have to get the new one because my quality sucks yeah. i'm pretty sure google does that too like Every, yeah, my, everybody does yeah that. It's, it's messed up see at least with your dslr you know that's true really i never thought about like that. that but that's true yeah with the, i mean there's all, all are the cameras better. companies gonna start doing that too like Sony, Nikon, Canon, gonna like start. But, you know, I feel like a lot of people modeling like, you or whatever. firmware updates on their DSLRs, you know? Like, I feel like in order for them to do it, they'd have to have a connection to the DSLR. So, but who knows? Maybe they might start doing that. Like, oh, you have to update your DSLR once a month, hook it up to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, some, all the newer cam, like, my camera is so old, but yeah. like, all the newer cameras being sold now, like, that is like one of the specs that you look at is like, how can I connect this to my phone so I can take the picture, send it right to my phone, edit it and upload oh, it. So it has a feeling that that is like. Oh yeah, I can definitely see it happening. And you're probably right. They probably will start doing that. Like yeah. how the phone companies are so they can make more money, which is kind of sad, but uh, hopefully but they're not listening are so to this. much more expensive. So maybe not. I don't know. I feel like a lot of smartphones are getting up there. Like I feel like the new like Apple phones are always like a grand or more. Like it's, it's yeah. insane. You can get a decent camera for a grand. Well, yeah. <laughs> like, a, you know, a couple a couple years old. Mm -hmm. Nice sure. what I have now. What, what are you shooting with? You're shooting with a uh, 5500? 53. 53? Yeah. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I was shooting with my girlfriend's 3100, and 
Like I, I got so tired of them. Like I miss my Sony. I miss all my other cameras. So I ended up buying an old Canon 5D, which is like 15 years old. But the quality is still there. It's just that you can't really connect with like a smartphone or anything, and it doesn't even have like a, a wireless remote for it. So that's kind of a bummer. But it is what it is. So you like know. you can't even use a wireless remote at all? It doesn't have one. Like I looked online, and like they started putting wireless remotes for them. I think for the the Mark II. So uh, I, I missed. I just missed it, you know. Can you update the firmware? <laughs> I already tried. No, like it's, it's all the way updated. I think the last update was like in 2010 or something. So it's okay. You get to hustle with that self timer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing yesterday with those portraits that I posted. Like I was just running back and forth. I'm like, this is insane. <laughs> you get that like sweaty glow on your skin. Yeah, I I had to turn up that AC. I was Spread like sweating. I'm like, this is terrible. Yeah. So for sure. But um. Yeah, so I definitely see that. Um, but like with the editing process and stuff, I feel like a lot of the apps now on the phone, like I know I edit a lot of my photos on my phone. Like I, I do some things in Lightroom and Photoshop, but I know that I jump over to like Snapseed and stuff and kind of edit it a little bit on there from I post it on social media. Do you do that or is, are you just like solely like Lightroom based or? So like if you asked me like a year ago, I would be like, oh, like I only use Lightroom or whatever. Yeah. But like recently, there were like some situations that happened where I was like taking a photo for someone they needed it right away I didn't have my MacBook so I was like well let me just like send it to my phone and I'll like do that real quick mm -hmm. and it turned out like fine and it was like pretty quick so now I'll do sometimes both like I'll do like the things in Lightroom that I like to do and then I'll send it to my phone look at it on my phone and decide like if I want to do like other stuff yeah yeah now that like uh Lightroom and like well, Creative Suites in general, like they have like the the monthly like it's all online kind of and yeah, monthly yeah. things, which yeah. I mean it's cool and everything, but I feel like the it doesn't have as many um tools and stuff, or maybe I'm just using it wrong. But I remember no, using like it no? doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks that. But yeah, because but I remember you can, using like, like complement it with other apps. Like you can use Lightroom, and then you can put it in Facetune. You can put it in Visco, like whatever you want. So I've been used Facetune. What is Facetune? Facetune is like um. It's like it's like a lot of tools from Lightroom, like clone, heal, like okay. dodge and burn, whatever. But it's like in simpleton terms, so it's like smooth skin, <laughs> highlight, oh, <laughs> like that kind of thing. And so like, and sometimes it's so I just I have my MacBook, so I edit on that in Lightroom, mm -hmm. and I it's not the smoothest for like getting the details because I'm working like on a trackpad. I don't have like a pen or anything fancy like that. So like sometimes if I am like going in on someone's face, like I can just like blow their face up in Facetune and then kind of just use my finger to get like exactly where I want to be. Oh, awesome. That's pretty, pretty cool. I should check that out. Check out. That, it's fun it... to see like how ridiculous you can make somebody look. So like yeah. I did that like when I was like learning how to use it like and but it's funny because like some Facebook moms will actually post those pics like for real <laughs> be like oh don't I look beautiful today like yeah. completely flat face like dark dark eyebrows like it's like oh Rhonda <laughs> yeah I've definitely seen those too I'm like how do you not like I feel like they should know like people are gonna know like that's not real like your face does not look like that like. But people are commenting on it and be like oh hun you look so good like not a day over fifty. <laughs> ridiculous it is it's it's it's, it's quite bad. yeah and then like people even our age do that like people who should know better like but maybe i that's when i think like because i have trained my eye a lot like just by looking at photography and doing photography and editing photos like it really trains your eye a lot so maybe i notice it more than the average yeah. person does but I don't know. I feel like some of those are pretty, uh, it's like, how can you not recognize it? But I definitely yeah. know what you mean. Like after working, like and doing like touch ups and everything for so many years, like, like you can definitely right. see it. Yeah. Yeah. But like in, in dating profiles, like that's the worst. It's I want like, to know about that. It's been a while. Guys, guys it's like, I, what? Like you, you, my skin isn't that smooth. And I know that you haven't been wearing SPF since you were 15. So come on. <laughs> are they photoshopping in like six packs and stuff too? No. Like their face, like just their face. I don't like a like I don't want to date a guy that has like completely smooth skin and like a dark dark eyelash and like it and like three filters on you like it's like what the heck. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's that's pretty insane. I feel like when I was on dating sites, it's I don't really recognize that. No stuff. one's gonna have any idea what you actually look like. This is true. You can call them out on it when you see them, but like, yo, well, what's up? Your face is not smooth. Your I mean, eyelashes I would, are. I would never talk to somebody who's had that poor photo editing skill. So. All right. 
All right. Um, so uh, you want to get into the photos um, that you've taken? I know you sent me a list of your favorite photos. Um, want to jump into that? Sound good? Just jump on into it? Um, okay. So the first portrait that, uh, that Mara sent me... Um, Oh, should I say like my three types of favorites first? Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, she sent me three different types of photography that are her favorites. So if she wants to jump in and tell everyone watching what those are. Um, so I use like natural light almost exclusively because I'm lazy and don't want to learn about things that I don't know about and be bad at it for a while. So I really like to play with the natural light that's around. So like, you know, just if you just look out your window, like you can see like the light falling on you, there's going to be patches of light, patches of shadow, like especially if you're like in an interior where there's a lot of windows, like that's one of my favorite places to shoot, like an interior with cool things in it, but like lots of windows. Mm -hmm. so I like to play with like the natural light and the shadow and like capture that like in patches, like on my subject. And then, um, of course, like everybody, every link photographer now, I like to do environmental portraits. <laughs> where you are putting the subject in an environment and then the location and the person together, like kind of like tell a story and give you like a complete idea. And it's much more interesting to look at a person like in a cool setting than a person like in front of a brick wall. So I like to do that. Yeah. And then what was my other one? Oh, hands. <laughs> yeah, like what, what is it about hands? <laughs> I like to take pictures of people's hands. Cause okay. I feel like it's like an, it's like a, a twist on a portrait. Cause like, your face, obviously, that's what people think when they think portraits, like portraits, headshots, like people's faces. That's what makes you individual. That's how people recognize you. But your hands are unique, too. And you do so much stuff with your hands, like our lives, like we create our lives with our hands. And I love taking pictures of people's hands. And it also, it's like cool to like show like what they do, like through their hands. Or like if you have a picture, you're taking a picture of something else to like put a hand like into the shot because it brings like a human element or an element of another person like into the other thing you're taking a picture of. I never really thought about it like that. Maybe I need to start shooting hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm missing out, yeah. And it's great. Like I I remember like the first time I realized I like taking pictures of hands. Um I was taking pictures of my best friend Alex's family. Mm -hmm. And like I took a picture of her mom. Her mom was like just you know drinking a glass of wine. So I took like a picture of her hand and hands and like the wine. And I was editing it and I was just like, this is freaking beautiful because like, I love her mom. She's like a mom to me too. And I was just like, like all the things like she's done with her hands, like for her family, like for me, for everybody that she's met, it was just like, it felt like super personal. So that's oh, when I was yeah. like, when I'd be on a shoot, I'd be like, let's take a picture of your hands. All right. <laughs> uh, do you want to jump into the hands first thing how we're uh, talking about them so much? Sure. <laughs> let's look at the hands. All right. Let's see. Let's start with... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the first portrait um do you have it pulled up on your side so yeah hold on okay oh is this the, with the blossoms yeah 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 so, what was that going on here what, what so, made you... i was hanging out with my friend jeff in the park because um the cherry blossoms were in bloom so uh -huh. we were fooling around with that and i thought it would be cool to just um do a portrait but it's not like the classic portrait because you can't actually see his face but you can still kind of see like how the picture is telling a story. And I like that his hands are like super clear in it too, because like, you know, look, his hands are so unique and different from your hands or my hands. So it's cool to kind of like highlight that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I, I definitely like the, like, the shallow depth of feel and everything kind of focusing on the flower in the hand. Yeah. I really like that a lot. Um, okay. And you can and then, tell like, it's springtime and we're outside. So yeah. If not, that's some good Photoshop. If, if it was like winter time and, <laughs> What not? Oh, you man, you gotta look into Facetune. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Things you can do. Okay, so then you have another one. It looks like someone's reaching through, like, um, to grab some blossoms and oh, leaves, or like. Green oh, leaves. oh yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I was I have mine out of order. That was fun. Yeah. So that one, um, I actually kind of debated sending that to you. Um, because it's like, it's not perfect. Like what's the focus of this picture is actually the blossom that's down at the bottom there. That's like the most crisp, sharp element of the photo. Yeah. Um, but I kind of like that too. Like I kind of like photos that aren't perfect. Um, it makes it feel kind of real and, um, 
but yeah, so her face is there. You can see her face, but um, the main thing that you see is her hand. Yeah, I really like how like the the leaves and everything is kind of like framing her face, even her face isn't focused, like her yeah. hand and the the blossom isn't focused. But I really like how it's like framed around her face and everything. That's really cool. Yeah, like, that's why I decided to send it because I was like, it's pretty good framing. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Focus, Definitely. not great composition, excellent. Which I would say is 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 a hallmark of my photography. Composition, good. Technical skill, uh, one team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then let's see. There's one. Um, it looks like someone's just holding. Someone was painting or uh, something along yeah. those lines. So this is um, a local artist here in Baltimore, Katie Pomfrey, and I went to her studio with um, a really good friend of mine, Julieta, who's a prop stylist, so I do a lot of work with her. She's really good. If anybody needs props or art direction, check her out. Um, Lima not a creative. Um, so we went to her studio, Katie's studio, and we were taking pictures of her and just around the studio, and she was like painting. And so I thought this would be a cool photo to get like her hands like covered in paint. Like these are like her literal tools of the trade. Like this yeah. is how she expresses herself creatively. This is how she makes a living. Um, you kind of see like her paint brushes and just like studio stuff like around too. Yeah, I really, it's really good. I like it. Yeah. And I, these hand photos are really starting to make me want to shoot hands. I'm not lying. Like, and like, so, and, like with her artwork, like so these hands, like literally like these fingers have created like such beautiful work that has inspired like so many people and that's like the raw material that's like doing that so. yeah all right and then it looks like the last one that you sent for hands uh someone's touching a baby <laughs> <laughs> <Same thing>. what <laughs> yeah so i'll i'll go ahead and introduce the next photo <laughs> <laughs> i do a good job my bad go ahead yeah it didn't say it very well <laughs> So I'll, um, I'll introduce the next photo. So this is just um, my niece, Jojo, um, and one of her brothers, Gabe, is reaching in um, to kind of like interact with her and like get that little, you know, you want the baby to like hold your finger. So it kind of brings in like, I'm taking a, the picture of my niece, but it's kind of bringing in like the family factor as well and the excitement of like having like a newborn in the house. I really like the lighting too, like how it's, it's focused more on like the baby's face and the hand and like it gets darker as you go down. Is that with natural light? Yeah, so this was natural light. Um, it was like a super sunny day, um, but I didn't like Jojo was literally like a day old in this picture and I didn't want the light to like shine in her eyes because she oh, okay. makes sense. They brand new. <laughs> so I like, what did I do? I think I put like a towel or a sheet or something over the window um, okay. to kind of diffuse the light a little bit. Um, but you can still see the shadows are quite dark because the light is still pretty bright. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's really good. Um, okay. Should we jump to light or portrait? What, what, what do you feel like talking about next? Um, let's do light. Let's do light. All right. Light. Okay. The first one, um, it looks like someone's on a pier with the, yeah. the light behind them. Yep, so this was like kind of like a cloudy day down um, in the docks at Fells Point, um, or the marina, I guess maybe is what it's actually called. And they have like these lampposts like every so often along the pier. And I guess it got dark enough like that they all came on. So I was like, ooh, like, well, let's like try this out. And um, so I had her stand in front of it. And like, this is when I was still kind of learning to use my camera. So I was like, let me like play with these settings to see how I can actually like get that to pop. So she was like patient with me while I, figured that out and I thought that turned out pretty good. Did you uh, go down on the shutter speed to get the light to pop like that? Do you remember? Yes, actually, yeah. I think I did because I had her, I told her like, just to hold still. <laughs> Don't move, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, and then I, you know, I edited it too. So it's a little mm. darker than it actually was to get okay. that contrast, but yeah, I thought that was cool. And it looks like the next one is of Skadden. Yeah, uh, so the next one, um, everybody's going to love it because it's of the most beautiful girl in the world. <laughs> so the picture is already amazing. Um, but yeah, no, this, so we're, we were like hanging out in the woods and this just shows like, you know, you can kind of, like when you're walking in the woods, you see like patches of light that you walk through and stuff. So I just like was like, ooh, like stand here, like let's get that like on your face. And I thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah. 
And I, I guess you guys put the leaves in the back of her hair. That is. Yes, we we need um, fairy leaf crowns, of course, as one does when playing in the woods. Well, <laughs> understandable. Yeah, fairy makes fairy sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then it looks like this next one is like in an apartment with the light shining through. It's yeah, so sitting this on the is, um, one of my old apartments. And so um, if you're looking at the photo, like to the left is a window with, and there's a street lamp right outside the window because it's in the city. And mm -hmm. so that's like causing that light there on the wall. Um, and then I got a little bit of, of it on his face and then you can kind of see like the shadow of his face as well in the lit up window so and like this picture isn't perfect either like you know everything like his feet are kind of like fuzzy it's not in focus that apartment was pretty crappy but i kind of like that like grungy aesthetic yeah, it looks like you got some globage too like on the knees or is that something else i think those those, those are his socks oh those are socks yeah those okay are the socks. okay that makes sense i can see the outline now i'm like yeah what is that <laughs> Okay, yeah, sweet. I, I noticed that a lot of your photos, it kind of has kind of like a film look to it. Is that something you're trying to like, is that what you like to do with all your images or is it just because this was later in the day and it was just kind of noisy and you had to shoot? Um, yeah, so this is this is pretty noisy, but then I do kind of like the film look. I like, I like to add a little bit of grain. I'd like things to be like warm and a little saturated. Um, I used to be super into like pulling out the browns in images and like punching that up a lot. Um, right now I'm, I'm trying out like a more like clear style, um, like the portrait that I sent you that I took. Um, but most of the photos that I shared with you are like kind of when I was into that more like saturated, a little greeny kind of. So do you feel like you're still trying to find your style? Because I know me, like as long as I've been shooting, I was like, oh, everyone has like a certain style, these famous photographers. I'm like, I'm trying to find one, but like I keep jumping around because I'm like, oh, I like this, I like this, you know, but I feel like if I want to like make, not make it, but like be a better photographer, I need to have a certain style and stick with it. But I'm like, I don't see how you can, because I feel like depending on like the, the what you're shooting, like there might be a different feeling you're trying to portray through that image. So I don't know yeah. how you feel along those lines, but yeah. No, I feel that too, because like, for me, it's like, you know, my skill level still isn't top notch. So like, I'll like know the kind of composition that I want. So I'll like go into the place, like with the person and get that. And then like, it won't always look the way I want it to look in my head because I don't have the technical skill to make it perfect. And mm -hmm. so then my task is in editing, I try to get it as close as I can, like while still being true to what the photo is. Like, I obviously don't want to make it completely something that's not. But yeah makes sense yeah hey, you work with what you work with what you got exactly yeah. <laughs> all right yeah and i think like your your voice comes out like especially the more you do like it might not be like every photo looks the exact same editing style right next to each other but if you mm -hmm. pull like 20 of photos and then like 20 of someone else's photos like i could probably pull out your photos like you might not be able to name what it is that your your voice is but it's there do you feel like you kind of have like uh kind of like a theme because I know like a lot of Instagrammers and stuff like they they post only like a certain kind of work even though like that's probably not all they're doing but like that's what they're sticking to for their page and like yeah. I've noticed that and everything it's like I'm trying to do that with film but I'm like I also want to shoot digital because it's really hard right now to like get film developed and everything but I'm also like I don't know if I should like restrict myself just to this even though it seems like that's what works for people to get more followers and everything well so that's a whole other question like do you want your photography to be defined by how many follows you have on Instagram. So yeah. if, if that's what you want, then you do that. You make, you put the exact same pink filter on all your photos. You do only three different kinds of shots and you like stagger out your feed perfectly. And like, that's how you get good at Instagram. Um, but maybe that's not how you get good at being true to yourself as an artist, as a photographer. Yeah, makes sense. I, really I, think, about it like that. I think especially like, like I'll speak for me, but like maybe you too, like people like us that started photography around when Instagram was becoming a thing. Like I know for me that was and still still can be like hella confusing. Like, am I doing this for Instagram, for likes, for popularity, or to express myself? Am am I gonna go work with this person because I want to or because I know my photo is gonna get two hundred fifty likes? Like it and you know, both reasons are valid, but it's yeah. it's worthwhile to examine, you know what is it that's really important to me 
Yeah, no, I definitely, I, I definitely hear on that because, like, when I was trying to do the 365 challenge, like, a, a while back and using Instagram and everything, I felt like, oh, I had to put it out. You know, I wasn't even fun anymore because I'm like, oh, I need to put it on Instagram or someone's going to call me out and be like, oh, you missed yesterday. You you ruined your 365 challenge. So I, I Good luck like, with that 364 challenge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just doesn't hold up, you know? It's not the same, but... um. Yeah, Nick was uh, talking to me the other day. He's like, let's try to do a 38 challenge, you know? And I'm like, first of all, I don't think, because the list had a bunch of stuff to do outside and everything. I'm like, well, we can't really do that right now because of the coronavirus. But also, I'm like, I feel like if I post on Instagram, like, do this 30-day challenge, you know? And then, like, people are going to be, like, waiting for it, you know? And then you're like, I have other things to do today, but I have to somehow make time to get that photo, you yeah. know? Which I feel like can be good and bad because it's, like, something's kind of pushing you to keep going with yeah. it. But then also it can be bad because it's, like, maybe you're busy and you're just, like, I'm too stressed out. Like, I don't want to go take this photo today. So I think it just depends on your personality. Like, for some people, like, I have a friend and, like, for him, like, challenges like that are super motivating and mm. good and, like, get him, like, in the groove and stuff. And for me, I would probably, I might, but I would probably never sign up to do that because I hate having pressure on me and it makes me like collapse inwardly and not want to do anything, like knowing that people have expectations. So like if I ever would sign up for that, I would like do it like with a clear expression of, yeah, on my, exactly on my (laughs) terms. Like I might do this, I might not, but I at least want to participate a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, but, I mean, that's what I should do next time. Yourself, yeah. But you shouldn't yeah. you shouldn't beat yourself up if you can't like do it one hundred percent, especially if it's like something that's months and a year long. Yeah, yeah. And it's supposed to be fun. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, so it looks like the last category is portraits. Uh, you sent me two. Um, the first one looks like someone's uh, on the ground with natural light coming through. They're in like a living room or dining room. Yeah, so this is actually like a used furniture showroom slash workshop. Um, it's called Cedar and Cotton. It's in Baltimore. Very, very cool place. Um, so this is my friend Julietta. She is the prop stylist, art director. So we went there um, to check it out and like kind of take some photos. She was like scouting for her work. Um, yeah, and I love this photo. I feel like her her outfit and her natural coloring um, mm. complement the textures and the coloring of Cedar and Cotton that was there that day. So. It turned out really good. It had like huge ceilings, so I could cut like you know, flip it and get that really nice shot. Um, get the you know the full window. So I really liked it. And this was all a natural light as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, I don't know why, but the it kind of reminds me of like uh, New Girl, like their their loft. Is that? I don't know. Just, no, it's kind of feels like it's like a big open space, like you know, yeah. lots of furniture. Yeah, totally. I, I like how, like, um, you don't have just the focus on her. Like, everything else is still pretty, like, in focus as well and whatnot. And I guess because you said it was, like, a store and everything, you probably wanted to have that all in focus, not just the yeah. stuff and everything to kind of showcase what's going on there. Yeah, so, like, the the goal of, like, this shoot was to show her out doing, like, the work that she does, which a lot of it is, like, scouting props and, like, locations and stuff. So it kind of, like, you know she's very much in focus but also like what she's doing is in focus mm. and just the the coloring is just so nice that's one of my favorites <laughs> i really do like the coloring the, yeah the lines like of the rug like you know coming out to that point and just like supporting her like triangle and angle shape it's so nice and i feel like also like looking at this if i didn't know like you took it and everything i'd be like oh this looks to me like someone was using like a full frame camera and everything but you used a crop sensor right you don't have a full frame yeah so i mean like I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, I have to have the full frame for the quality, but I mean, this this is really crisp and everything, and you have a crop sensor, and just shows yeah. you that you don't have to have high end gear to do yeah. a job. Like if you're if most of your work is being viewed like on a phone, like yeah, I mean yeah. it's nice and you can tell the difference, but it's is it essential. I don't think so, but yeah. I mean it would be nice. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Definitely. <laughs> All right, so the next one, it looks like um, two people on a skateboard. And, and, yeah. yeah, so, yep, just uh, Moon and Chantel hanging out outside. Like, they're really good friends. And, like, I really like a lot of the photos that I took with them because you can tell, like, the friendship that they have for each other. And yeah. they're both, like, very com- confident and comfortable in their skin. They're, like, super cool girls. So I was like, ooh, yeah, like, I'm digging, like, the cool girl vibes. 
Yeah, you can definitely get that from this photo. Like, if I didn't know these people, I'd be like, they look pretty cool, you know? But I don't really hang out with a lot of cool people, so, I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, all the colors, like, work really well. Like, it was fall, so, like, yeah. the orange and the pink are popping. Um, I like, like, they kind of, like, are nestled into that, like, arch shape that the trees are making. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, I feel like you have a really good eye for, like, framing, like, like with the arch and everything kind of framing them, so it kind of, like, pushes your eye towards them. I really like that, yeah. And, the, like, the leading lines and everything, for sure. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think that was all the photos that all you it. Yeah, I'm sorry I sent you so many photos, but it's oh, no, that's, a favorite. that's great, yeah. No, I like it. That way more people can see your work and everything, so it works, yeah, for sure. Um okay so let's see uh if you could give yourself a tip with the knowledge that you know now to like yourself when you first started out what would that tip be i'm gonna i know i wrote something <laughs> yeah go, go feel free to look at it <laughs> i'm gonna look at that what did i say i can't find what i said would you like me to read it out loud what you said? <laughs> yes. All right. And then I'll find it and I can okay. talk about it. I, I'm Mara and this is what I said. It's okay to not know everything and not be an expert. Just take it as you go. All right. <laughs> That's true. I think I already talked about that a little bit, which is probably Yeah, like, yeah. Like, definitely did for sure. Um, yeah. Like I know for me and maybe other people too, like, I don't do a lot of things that I'm interested in because I don't like the idea of not being good at them at first. Yeah. Uh, but photography is, like, is really not that hard. Um, it is, like, it can be hard. It is what you make it. So, like, it can be as simple as, like, ch -ch, there you go, you took a photo. And yeah. you can start there and, like, work the way up. For sure. Yeah, and I feel like with Instagram first started out and everything, I feel like it was kind of like a competition. I don't know if you ever felt like that, but like I was like, oh, I want to have like the better image or something when I was young. I'm like, oh yeah, their stuff sucks, you know, like judging people when you really shouldn't because like you don't know how they're, they, they could just start it out and everything. And now I'm just like, I, I, I like everyone's stuff pretty much. And I'm like, just do your, do your own thing. Yeah. Don't worry about what other people are doing because I mean, you don't get anything out of that, you know? I, feel yes, like just... I mean, yeah, you don't want to like judge the person, but I think it's okay to like look at someone's work and have a critical eye and be yeah. like, May oh, why does it look like that? Maybe they did this or I would have done this differently. Like, cause that's how you can like, that's a good way to learn too. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, don't be, don't be a mean girl. And like, <laughs> this is crap. Write, what are write, you doing? Do an online review of them or something. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to do that. Like start a private chat trashing them. <laughs> So do you have like, uh, is there any photographers that um, you're a big fan of now, like today, not today, but right now that you're like really into their work that kind of inspires you and everything? Yes. And I'm going to read them because I wrote them down too. Um, my favorite, she's an artist and a photographer. Her name is Charlie Burroughs, um, but like her company is called Me Oh My Girl. Mm -hmm. um, so she does like so much different things. She does marketing photography, portrait photography, and artwork. So mm -hmm. I absolutely love her. I followed her for like maybe almost 10 years now. And like just seeing like her work grow, like just puts me to shame. Because <laughs> she's, she's amazing. Um, I also really like this photographer, um, Davis Bates. Like he posts um, like really cool, like kind of like youth culture, like cool kind of photos that are like just regular people out doing things like maybe posed a little bit like make it a little shinier than real life mm -hmm. like really cool um i like um humans of new york i what is his name um brandon stanton so i i love him like he he just takes pictures well he started off like taking pictures of like random new yorkers and he would like post their picture and like tell like their story mm -hmm. and now like he does like whole series where he like goes to like you know first responders or like oh, wow. sorts of people and like profiles people so i really I think like that kind of made the connection in my head between like person in a photo also has story, which you know is pretty cool. Like you're not just like a face. Yeah, you're definitely. Story too. And if you like read the story and then look at the photo, you can like see that story like in the person and in the photo. So that was cool. 
And then did I say anybody else? Oh yeah, Erin Boyle. I really like her. Um, she's like a blogger and a photographer. Um, I think her blog is um, t- Reading My Tea Leaves. Um, but she just, she literally like lives in her apartment with her family and she takes pictures of like the same things all the time, but like slightly different, mm-hmm. like just for everyday life. And it's like really illuminating to me that like things can be simple, but still beautiful. Um, so like her work like really speaks to like, you know, simplicity. So I like that. Do you think you'd ever try to do something like that? Kind of start up a blog and do something along those lines or you just like looking at it and giving you ideas and whatnot? Um, I don't know if I would ever have a blog because it's so much work. Yeah. I mean, I guess now's the time to do it because I usually have two jobs. So right now, one of my jobs is serving. So I can't do that right now because of the pandemic situation. So maybe, maybe like in the future, I'm definitely open to it, but I've, mm. I've started a lot of things in my life and then quickly abandoned them because they were much more work than I anticipated. So. I <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't want to do that until I was 100% ready. All right. Um, I think we kind of touched base on this a little bit, but, um, if you, what, what, if you could have any camera or any kind of setup, what would your setup be? It doesn't seem like you, well, go, go ahead. <laughs> I think like in my notes, I said like something light with some nice lenses. Yeah. That's what I'll say. Like, it doesn't seem like there's a certain type of like camera that you really want. You just want nice lenses. So like I, like I'm probably not going to be getting another camera for a couple more years, and who knows what what's going to happen. If you had like a bunch of funds, like what would the camera be? If you if you could get any camera or anything, you know, or I wouldn't. I would want to like rent a bunch and try them out. That makes sense. Yeah. But like something that would be important to me was that it be lighter, so probably a mirrorless. I don't know, like since I don't like lugging around my heavy camera, yeah. and then I would want like a some really nice glass. <laughs> <laughs> like some Zeiss no. lens, some more yeah. Sigma lenses, like, because I, to me, that makes more of a tangible difference. Mm-hmm. Like, I could take my crappy camera and put a really nice lens on it, and it makes a huge difference. So I can't even imagine, like, a super nice lens and a super nice camera, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> For sure, yeah. So you mentioned mirrorless cameras. I know that we talked about how, like, we think cell, you think cell phones are probably going to overtake DSLRs and everything. Do you think uh, mirrorless are kind of replacing DSLRs? I know some people are like, oh, I'm going to stay with DSLR till the end and everything. But I feel like mirrorless is definitely, uh, within the past couple of years, has definitely made an imprint on photography for sure. Yeah. Um, do I think it's, I mean, I think probably it'll be popular. Like, if you look at, like, look at like how it's gone in the past like you had film cameras and then you had dslrs and so you have still people are like oh like i only shoot film and now you're gonna have people like oh i I only shoot dslr which is great like shoot what you want to shoot like have fun do that or you know shoot what you have access to um but yeah i mean it's just nice to like have something that you can just easily take with you and move around like that's a huge benefit especially when the quality I mean, I can't tell the difference, can you? Between a DSLR and a mirrorless picture, like if all the other specs are the same? I guess not. I feel like like the earlier like mirrorless, like I feel like the depth wasn't really there. Like my A6000 compared to like DSLR, I feel like I for some reason just didn't seem like there was much depth to it, but mm-hmm. that could have just been my settings and how I was shooting with it. But I mean, I feel like they definitely have pros and cons to both. But um, yeah. I feel like definitely as things get more advanced and everything, I feel like they're definitely up there with DSLR and some are definitely better than DSLRs in their own way. So. Yeah, like I don't know anything about like the filming capacity. Like I know like a lot of people like do f- filming on DSLRs versus. So I don't know what that would be like on a mirrorless. Yeah, like that's why like I would wanna once I get a pot of money to spend on cameras, I would just I would literally go to like the store and be like, what do you recommend? And like let me rent like a couple different ones and just try them out and see. Yeah. So I've already thought about that, like renting out stuff beforehand. It's like, oh, you have to buy it. But like, I'm, I mean, I've rented out a lens in the past. Like it was an old Sigma, like 1.4, 30 millimeter. And I, I love that thing. But um, besides that, I haven't really rented out gear. I just feel weird, like renting out gear. But I guess it would make sense if you had the money and stuff to test it yeah, out. Yeah, because I want to get like, I've had my camera that I have now, like for so long. So I'd, I'd have my next camera, I would foresee for a long time, too. So I want to make sure, you know, it's, it's something you like. like. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense for sure. Um, so, is there something uh, within the photography world? I feel like we kind of talked based on this already. Um, that there's uh, 
something that you'd like to learn? I think we already covered this. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I right. would like, ideally, like I would love to learn it all. Yeah. Um, just depends on like time and resources. For sure. Okay. If you could shoot anywhere in the world with anyone, uh, where would that be and who would it be with? So I'm not really that hyped up about that kind of idea. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you break the question down, like, would you like to travel? Yes. Would, yeah. But like, you know, a certain model or a certain person, like another photographer, like I'd rather just hang out with friends and family that I enjoy and like take pictures of them. Makes sense. Yeah. It'd be more enjoyable for sure. An experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what is one of the most difficult things you've come to realize being a photographer in today's world? I know it's a tough one. <laughs> that's that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> I remember now. <laughs> I had a good point. Um, yeah, like it, I feel like there's a lot of gatekeeping around photography. Um, like even insofar as do I call myself a photographer like we talked about that like before we even started filming um like there are people that would be upset if I refer to myself as a photographer like I, it's hard for me to waste a breath but like you know you have to like have been doing it for so long and have like all this equipment and all these clients and a website and a business and then you're a photographer but it's like, you know, a kid like picking up, you know, 12 year old kid picking up their first camera or even their cell phone, taking pictures of their friends and like editing it in Visco. Like I would say that person is a photographer too. So that can be really hard. And that's like a lot of like, what is it called? When you have like internal pressure on yourself and you feel like you're not good enough. Imposter syndrome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I nobody, guess that. <laughs> nobody wants to deal with like imposter syndrome when you're like trying to take up like a new hobby. And, like, yeah. you know, Instagram probably has a lot to do with this, too. Like, oh, I'm not good enough as that person. I don't get as much likes as that person. I'm not really a photographer. Or, you know, I don't know. I just feel like there can be a lot of icky feelings that go along with it. So I don't, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, I definitely see that, too, though. I definitely hear you on that. Like, yeah, it's... have you experienced that? I feel like I don't want to be going off on a tire. Well, no, I've definitely experienced it, yeah. Like, when I was first getting into it, everyone was like, oh, who was a photographer? I'm like, ah, I like taking photos, you know, like. Yeah, because you felt like an imposter, right? Yeah, oh, exactly. I don't, I don't earn the title of photographer yet. Yeah. It's hard. And even, like, when I worked at Gentry Studio, like, the photography studio and stuff, like, people were like, oh, so you're, like, a professional photographer. I'm like. Am I though? You mean I get paid, but am I a professional? I don't know. Like it just I feel like it's definitely uh kind of kind of a weird situation. I mean, like, like, you... like people like, oh, they got like a starter DSLR for Christmas and two months later they have a Facebook business page for their photography business, you know, charging fifty bucks for a portrait session down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> that now that person's a photographer but like you don't have to do all those things to be, if you want to like that's fine but like I can't tell you like how many people I've known like just on Facebook I probably know like probably at least 20 people that at some point started a photography business oh definitely yeah I feel like there was definitely a surge for a while like back in like the early days of Instagram and everything and it definitely like died out but i feel like there's still definitely a few people doing that but i mean also like that's how you get started like i mean there's been a that's few how you get people... started with anything though right yeah so, you know, yeah. It's, it's, i don't know why like i'm hung up on it about photography probably because like i do photography and i felt that way too like i started taking photos like to make friends mm -hmm. and then people started telling me oh you need to be charging for that so i felt like i had to charge for what i was doing or i, I wasn't appreciated and people were taking advantage of me but mm -hmm then that had a whole nother like can of worms and issues associated with it where I never stopped to think like, what do, what do I really want to do? Do I just like taking pictures and like expressing myself and making friends and connecting with people? Or do I want to like start a business and be compensated for my worth and my skills? Um, <laughs> and you know, it's a, it's a fine line to walk. Like, you know, I don't know. It's, there's a lot of stuff that goes in with it Definitely. when, when, you know, cause it, it's like mon monet monetization of like talent or interest. It's 
it's tricky. Yeah, I definitely hear you on that one. Yeah, I don't see how film photographers did it, like doing weddings and stuff. Like I know Mr. Gentry, he told me like he used to shoot weddings all the time with film because he was in the industry for so long. But I would be so stressed out because like everything's on this one role. And like if something happens to that role, you're screwed. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how like this. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, and there's still like photographers out there that just shoot film for like weddings and stuff. And I mean, like, I, I feel like the look and everything is cool, but I feel like you're definitely having a higher risk of like something happening to those images over digital. Um, so have you looked at your parents like wedding photos? I have. They're really good. Yeah. They're really good. So yeah. like my parents is not good at all. And like, I remember like looking at it like as a kid and being like, oh my gosh, my parents wedding. And like, how romantic, look at these beautiful photos. And then like, I recently looked at it again and I was like, these are terrible. <laughs> like, what is, what is, like, it'll be like a group shot. Mm -hmm. And like, like this is the photo and like, this is the group. <laughs> There's like all this blank space. And like, it's just, it's like, they were really bad. But like, I feel, I was gonna, I asked you cause I was gonna be like, you know maybe that was like a common thing like when it was all like film photography for weddings well, i but, think it also depends on what they were shooting with edit. Because, well no there was still ways to edit but it was a different kind of editing for sure but um yeah i feel like it, it all depends on what they were shooting with because if they were shooting with a rangefinder like obviously the image is off so like you have to keep that in mind when you're shooting and whatnot but i feel like my, my parents wedding photos they're really really good but i guess it's also what you pay for like i mean i don't know if your parents yeah. paid paid a good amount of money for i don't know if my, my grandma paid <laughs> oh okay <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like even my sister who got married in April, like they went with a photographer that was uh, pretty cheap because they're like, oh, we want to save money. But I'm like, you're going to get like not the best quality if you're going to like try to save money on the photos. Like I feel like if you want to get decent wedding photos, you need to spend that money on a decent photographer because I mean, hopefully you only get married once. But I mean, even if not, like you want to have those memories and everything. If you have like a crappy photographer come in and take images and like you're like I can't use this at all and then they also were like no one can take photos at the wedding because we have a photographer so they don't really have anything to show for their wedding so, so you didn't you didn't think the photos were very good uh hopefully that person's not listening but no I, I they're terrible and you, and you warned your sister and she she wasn't well, like oh yeah let's well, listen to my brother who knows quite a well bit the bad thing is I kind of like so they're asking me for photographers and like I, I mentioned Nick and I, I feel like they should have gone with Nick but they ended up going with this person I used to work with and like I, because she worked with me and stuff, I kind of knew how she sh shot and everything. So I'm like, oh yeah, she should do a decent job, and she's not charging that much. So I was like, they're they're gonna decent photos. I mean, they won't be amazing, but I don't know if the person was just stress shooting or what. But there's like no group photos of my family or anything, no like photos of like my mom with like my sister, and it's it's just really bad. And I'm just like, you guys should just yeah. hire me. But that sounds like more poor planning than. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, I think they like talked to her like months out. So like the photographer should have gotten in touch with them. Like, oh, we need to plan the times of what mm -hmm. we're going to do. And everything. So, Here's the list of shots that we're going to be doing. Definitely. Tell yeah. grandma. So I feel like it's definitely, uh, you get what you pay for. So if I ever get married, I definitely plan on spending at least a grand or two grand on the photographer. Just so I know. That I'm getting sounds something. cheap to me. Like, I know, right? I don't like, know, like, like if, like if like Baltimore prices are now. just high, but that sounds like the budget photographer would be like two grand. Well, how like much is one like, grand, how, you're how not even getting anybody to do it for one grand. Well, how much, how much are you seeing then like in, in Baltimore? Like how much is like the average like, for- Like minimum is gonna be like three grand and like good is gonna be five to seven. Does that include prints though? Or is that just all digital like images? Um, I think it includes like, you know, an album from Shutterfly. <laughs> Yeah. Something. See, that's that's a thing. Like, I'm like, if they just do digital and like they don't do like the printing, like I, if they give me the digital images after they edit it, of course, and everything, I don't mind getting it printed off because I know where to get it printed. But I mean, yeah. if they're if I'm paying three three grand, like I definitely expect some prints for sure. But um. But think cool. about like so one of the girls that I work with um, at my serving job, she's a wedding photographer as well, and just the amount and you know this from like working at the studio, the sheer amount of work like just in editing is incredible. Okay. Like you're talking like she when she, I think she told me like I was like oh like how many images to, you know talking shop how many images do you typically deliver to your client and she was like oh like you know like four four thousand or something and I was like what <laughs> <laughs> double GF like no I'm no wonder you're always complaining about how you're up all night editing for months like I can't even imagine like yeah, now like, obviously you can use like the same filters for the same lighting yeah. setup and stuff but or sorry presets <laughs> 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 but 
but um but yeah ooh, that's 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 such such a huge amount of work that i don't think people realize like you're yeah, just, I was you're say just that. Yeah. staring at your computer like can't even see like after a couple hours like tweaking so everybody looks beautiful and covering up people's blemishes and stray hairs and shit like oh yeah it's definitely a lot more work than the the customer knows for I sure i'm like 20 to 40 hours just doing that and then how much per hour is are you worth like yeah be like why the photographers get up to that amount that they charge for sure those are the real photographers <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think that was all that I had on the list. Is there anything that you want to talk about or okay. photography related? Do you have any upcoming things photography related that you plan on doing or? Um. Oh, actually, this is this is a good segue because I I think I put this in my notes, but we didn't talk about it. <laughs> was it the one I erased? Because you told me to erase that one. <laughs> Oh, find your well, find your work. That's one that we didn't talk about. Where where viewers can find your work, but I usually do that last. Just um, what did I say? Oh, right. So, I think the next kind of things I want to do with photography are more art based. Um, because like I originally I really liked like weird photos with like people like in con contorted contorted contortionist, like just like yeah. weird pose is that you weren't like you weren't taking the photo to look pretty you were taking the photo to like express an emotion or make somebody feel something yeah. so i think i want to like kind of do something like that maybe not exactly that but more a photo for art and expression as like picture of somebody looking pretty um which i love taking pictures of people looking pretty too like all the gorgeous people i've met and taking their photos it's amazing <laughs> but i am um, Oh, so I had this down for like when you asked me about who my favorite photographers were. I think it's also super important to like not only look at photography um, and photographers, but to also look at art and artists. Um, and that's something that's helped me a lot. Like I've just looked at like tons of photos and like even marketing photos and like just artwork. It really helps like train your eye and like you can take that like into your own work like when you're planning like oh like I really like this artwork it's just like it's like a like one of the artists I really like Ashley Mary she does like shape art so it's mm -hmm. just like all these shapes everywhere but like my eye is going here but then this is like this shape over here is like tugging my eye over here and the but they're all working together cohesively and then you can kind of like you know when you're looking through your viewfinder kind of like see what's going on and I don't know. It looks like everything that we want to talk about today, it looks like we kind of covered. Um, if you have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. And then uh, lastly, if you want to find Mara's work, where, where can they find your photography at? So my Instagram is earthtomara, and I also have a website, which is earthtomara.com. Okay. Um, thanks again for uh, joining us today, being our second guest on this this show that I'm trying to do during the coronavirus to keep me from going insane. So I appreciate <laughs> that, at least for me, you know. My but, pleasure. It's so good to talk to you. We should do it again. Do but, you have, um, um, no, this is what I was thinking. Somebody needs to interview you, and I volunteer as tribute. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Just uh, shoot me a time and um, make sure the questions aren't too hard. <laughs> They should be like the same questions because it feels awkward. Like you're asking me a question and then like, I'm just being rude and being like, yes. All right. Let's talk about well, me some more. Let's moving on. You're let's always welcome to ask me the more. questions too, just because I'm asking you, you know, it's not a one way street. I, I feel I, I'm open to answering the questions too, but I guess I didn't per, like let you know that beforehand, but yeah. yeah. Next person I interview, I'll be sure to be like, you can ask me questions too, but I don't want to be like, Oh, it's about him. Even though it's his channel, you're, you're the guest. So it's about you. <laughs> But um, yeah, so this is Mara, and uh, be sure to check out her work. She's a great photographer. And uh, we'll see you next time. Do you, do you have a sign-off? I don't. Do you want, you, want to do, you want to do a sign-off? I was, gonna do, I was wanting to do your sign-off, but if you don't have one, then. We'll just make one up. It could be my thing, you know? You got this. No pressure. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Very original. I like it. All right. Bye. That's my <laughs> sign off now. Until next time, everyone. Stay tuned for uh, the next video, um, whoever that may be.